All right, so a lot of times when you have a problem like this, uh, you know, you see these big numbers and say, all right, let's factor out a GCF, right? And let's try to make this simplified. But if you spend some time um, trying to find your GCF, you'll recognize that there's not going to be a simplified number that I can just you know, factor out of, of both of these. So the next thing to look at is, well, instead of, instead of just going automatically to the quadratic formula, let's see if there's a way that we can use some of our special factoring techniques. And obviously, what we're looking at today is the perfect square trinomial. So again, to determine that, we want to make sure our first term and our last term can be written as squared numbers. Well, 121 x squared, that can be rewritten as 11x squared. So it can be written as an x as a squared number. And 64 can be written as 8 squared. So therefore, since both of our middle and our last terms can be written as a squared number, it's possible for us to be able to factor this being a perfect square trinomial. However, we need to make sure our middle term is going to be double the square root of both of our first and last terms. So it's going to have to be 2 times 11x times 8. That needs to equal. 176. Now, obviously, I know that's going to be negative, and we'll talk about that in a second. But anyways, if I do uh, 11 times 8, which is 88x times 2, is actually 176x. So how do we get, so this is a perfect square trinomial, but how are we going to get this to be negative? Well, first of all, to solve, I'll set it equal to 0. And we understand that the first two terms are going to be 11x and 11x, and then 8 and 8. However, we know that our middle term is negative. Therefore, both of these factors have to be negative. And that's still going to work because negative 8 times negative 8 gives us a positive 64. However, when we multiply a negative times a, or a negative times a positive and add it to another negative times a positive, that's going to give us a negative middle term. So now to continue solving, I can rewrite this as a binomial squared. So 11x minus 8 squared. Now I can use my square root method to solve. So I take the square root of both sides. 0 equals 11x minus 8. Add 8 to both sides. So I have 8 equals 11x divided by 11, divided by 11. x equals 8 over 11. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve this perfect square trinomial. Thanks.